Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, live at VMware Explore. This is our second day of coverage, but you know that because you've been watching. You know we have two sets, Lisa Martin here with John Furrier, Dave Vellante, Rob Stretchy on the other side of their live at the same time. We have a great segment coming up next. We're going to be talking about data protection, security, ransomware, all that interesting stuff. One of our alumni is back. Mike Kale, the CTO of Primary IO, and Lorenzo Sali, founder and CEO of Primary IO. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having us and having us back. All right. Our pleasure, you're, you're going to be an alumni in about 20 minutes. Right. <laughs> right. Very Lorenzo, excited to be here, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Talk a little bit about Primary IO, mission, vision, what gaps in the market did you see in, from a data protection, disaster recovery perspective that led you, inspired you to start the company? Certainly, so um, initially started uh, as a uh, migration platform for VMware workloads. So knowing that um, you know, close to 80, 85% of all enterprises are virtualized and are using vSphere, is uh, 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 VMware platform for virtualization. So we focused on that segment initially. And the, the kind of the secret sauce was uh, we, we worked very early on with VMware vSphere APIs for IO filtering, VIO product initially. And uh, uh, since we're sitting in the IO path, we, our algorithms were able to capture only the, uh, the hot data set. Okay. So in other words, we were able to move VMs uh, or, or, or applications to the cloud at a fraction of the time like any other product. And from a migration technology, we started you know, looking into disaster recovery, disaster recovery as a service, and as you know, you know, the recent activities in the ransomware space. So we saw a gap for a product that could deliver a, a continuous data protection uh, in the disaster recovery space. What's been some of the feedback from customers? As ransomware is a household word, we talk about this, John, all the time. It's, it's, I'm pretty sure my mom has even heard of it. <laughs> um, but it's also, nobody wants to become the next headline. Right, and that's a huge risk, customer churn, brand reputation. Talk a little bit about how the ransomware landscape has evolved, especially the last few years as we've seen some, some big breaches. Um, indeed, so you know, a, a few years back, disaster recovery was something nice to have. Yeah. You know, and, and with, with uh, AI and, and, and technology growth, and especially the cloud usage, the cloud consumption, obviously the bad guys probably start thinking about, uh, about it the same way. So hence in the last uh, you know, 36 months plus, the, the, uh, the market has been uh, you know, enorm enormously into, towards disaster recovery and ransomware adds to that actually. Guys, on the, on the product and technology side and also the business model, we're here at VMware Explore. What's the relationship with the VMware ecosystem Okay, and as multi-cloud or super clouds we see coming, the operating model with cloud crossing environments is an opportunity for exploits. And the surface area is now larger, obviously, and cloud native. How does that influence your product as customers start to architect the multi-cloud, super cloud environment? They have to start getting, they got to start thinking like a systems concept, systems thinking, not just, I got to pull some security on. How do you guys look at the multi-cloud, and not sure AI is a gift, so I'm sure the AI is in there, but like as they start, as enterprises start designing in their strategy to implement this environment, how do you guys vector into that? What's the, what's the pitch, what's the story, and how do they engage? First of all, just to answer the ransomware question a little bit further, you can't recover from a ransomware incident unless you're protecting your data. And you have to have a comprehensive data protection strategy, which is why you know, we were one of our product, Protect.io, which is our disaster recovery as a service platform, not a product, was one of the top five announcements here from IBM. So we have a good, deep partnership with IBM. Uh, with respect to multi cloud, I think you, you heard. Hold on, before we go to multi cloud, explain the relationship with IBM real quick. I'll, I'll let Lorenzo give the, the business okay, context. Okay, we'll come back to the, okay. And then I'll talk about technology. Right, stay with the tech for now. Okay, go ahead, continue on multi cloud. So multi, we'll back to the multi cloud because VMware workloads in this whole super cloud architecture that they're talking been talking about, and Kit's been talking about it for at least a year, I believe. Like because we're embedded into VMware with the Veo framework, because we've taken the the initial Veo filter that the migration product used, moved that into a mic, uh, replication filter. So we're doing continuous data replication of changed blocks versus backup or snapshot. So you, and we're replicating that into cloud object storage. So you think about 
the cloud object storage can sit anywhere, and you can attach that cross cloud. So then you have a data fabric and a protection fabric across your application workloads wherever they exist. And then you can recover back into them because we're-, we're You got everything. We, and we orchestrate with v, <laughs> vCenter APIs, so we're, you know, the rehydration and instantiation of VMs on demand, does, the cloud provider doesn't really matter because we're abstracted away into the yeah. VMware environment. So that's basically an air gap for you guys, and to use a bad analogy, but vCenter is what, the console? Right, for that? Yeah, vCenter is the command and control aspect. So you guys are basically taking the data, putting it in the cloud, if they get ransomware attack, you just recover and say, I'm not paying Bitcoin, we just right. come back and bring the data back. So you recover, and we have the ability to recover up until a given point in time, because we keep the metadata of the blocks, and because, because you don't want to replicate, ideally you know basically when you were infected with ransomware, and you want to recover up to a point before that. And we want to do it into an isolated environment to make sure so you don't proliferate ransomware into your cloud DR. Right. So we've, we're integrating, and we'll announce this more formally later, probably at Barcelona, but integrating into IBM's cyber resiliency platform. So we're the data protector and provider into that, and then we'll orchestrate the fail back once the security team makes sure the environment's clean. So the only way for the ransomware bad guys to get the stuff is to hit the cloud too. Correct, and they have to that's just breach us. <laughs> Which is almost impossible. Or, and they have to breach the cloud provider too, because. Okay, Lorenzo, IBM, we met, uh, saw you guys at uh, the first night we were here in the hallways of the event. Um, I noticed you were with a lot of, a big contingent of IBM. I saw some old friends there, uh, multiple entrepreneurs. Big crowd, big relationship with IBM. Can you explain your relationship with IBM and how that fits into VMware Explore, VMware, and? disaster recovery and ransomware. S uh, certainly. <clears throat> so, um, it, it's probably well known that um, IBM is the largest VMware operator, or VM, and number of VMs in the world. So, you know, our product being based on VIO platform, uh, VMware, vSphere, uh, then obviously it was a very natural path to make sure that the cloud that we pick uh, and that, that our disaster recovery and migration is working on is someone with, you know, largest number of VMs, and it happened to be IBM Cloud. And now, you know, not to drop names, in 2018, uh, the VM World at the time was called VM World in Barcelona. I ran into Mr. Arvind Krishna. <laughs> at the time, he was the GM of the uh, yeah. of IBM Cloud. So <laughs> yeah. I had seven minutes to pitch. Nice. Uh, you know, so we pitched a product, and it was based on the hot data sets, the migration on hot data sets. And he, he loved the idea. We, we were introduced to the, to the CTO at the time. And, and then from there, it was just a fast track as, as a technology partner. So, um, so therefore, in the last three or four years, we've, we have done a, 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 you know, quite a few migration projects for IBM, and that partnership became deeper and deeper, and, and, and it's an excellent partnership. We get a lot of pull, we get introduced yeah. to a, a lot of customers, and, um, you know, we are a product company, a tech company. However, over time, throughout COVID, there was a lot of demand for for some services, and I think if you guys remember GTS, uh, now Kindrel, yep. uh, uh, that was in a spinoff. So there was some uh, some uh, uh, request and, and requirements for services as well. So over time, we actually build our own services team yep. uh, that is being uh, led by our uh, field CTO out of London today. So now we've got a migration as a service, and then naturally we took it over to disaster recovery as a service. So unlike other tools in the marketplace, we're just not a, 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 a license that somebody has to go ahead and, yeah. or a customer has to do it themselves, or they probably would have to find a professional services to do it. It's all in-house, from discovery to migration to disaster recovery managed service. As a service, no product to install, you guys are running the service, for the customer, subscription based? Yes. Correct. Okay. It's software as a service. Software as a service, perfect, Correct. got it. so it's easy to consume. Yeah. What's the profile? I'm imagining you probably have a range of high enterprises to uh, small, medium sized, large businesses, which are hit a lot by ransomware. Yeah. What's the profile of your customer? I, I, or I mean, everybody? Well, <laughs> SaaS is al al almost, yeah. SaaS in a software as a service product, uh, is, and this is the first authentic SaaS product on IBM Cloud, by the way. 
for VMware workloads. For VMware workloads. Yes, got exactly. it. Exactly. So, so we're focused on those. So people who have VMware are mostly all their basically all their customers. Yeah. Pretty much is your profile. Yeah. So yeah. believe it or not, and these are all life uh, opportunities that we have, you know, delivered in the last uh, 18 months. We have seen as little as 50 VMs, as many as 2,500 VMs, 3,000 VMs customers. So. To answer your question, yeah, SMB, SMEs, as well as enterprise. What's the IBM's interest? Because they have customers with a, with a lot of VMware, right? Is that why? They like, they like uh, that? There, there, there is, we, we believe that roughly there is about 900,000 or a million VM, VMware VMs being managed by IBM Cloud today. Yeah, IBM has a good presence. So. And IBM Cloud, because they offer bare metal servers in VPC, is a technology differentiator between the other, for the other clouds. Like, because now, your workloads operate the same as they do on-prem, but you just don't have to manage the metal, which customers that resonates with. And yeah. because when we do failover, it's on demand, your total cost of ownership of our platform is much lower. Because you don't have to have the product running, because we're running the SaaS central console for the UI, and we manage the data plane as well, and the infrastructure creation and teardown. Mike, Mike talk a little bit about Disaster recovery is a service, obviously every industry is, is fair target for ransomware. It's a matter of when it's going to happen to us, not if at this point. But are you seeing any industries in particular being uh, early adopters of the bandwagon of, disaster, of true disaster recovery as a service? I think the profiles and customers we've spoken to and are working with runs the gamut from education to SMB to large enterprise, you know, Fortune 100, Fortune 20 customers because it, it, it's top of mind for everybody. Like every day there's a bad ransomware headline, like our, our field CTO found one today, I think it was in the UK where, uh, it was a Danish company. Uh, Cloud Nordic. Yeah, Cloud Nordic. They were completely wiped out. They can't recover, they're not paying the ransom. So imagine you're a customer of, of anybody. Of yeah. Right. And then think about you know, financial sector, critical infrastructure, ransomware gets through that. Like we have a big problem as a, as a country. Yeah, and yeah. ransom is brutal. I mean, it's, it's devastating. And they don't discriminate. Yeah. I mean, they're, the impact they're looking massive. for open. Yeah. The impact is, I mean, the, if, if, if an infrastructure or a data center is down for a week or longer, you know, that you can imagine what the financial impact on that. Catastrophic. So as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's not a nice to have anymore. It's, no. it's, it's a must have. Yeah. My last question before we wrap up is, what is the current state of the art for you guys what do you do next? What's on the horizon? Um, so, obviously, you know, focusing on the product, uh, especially you know the combination of uh, of uh, disaster recovery as a service and an extension of that being ransomware uh, recovery. Um, uh, you know, for the, with the size of our company, we are laser focused on IBM Cloud customers and their requirements. So we talk to these to the customers very closely. And you know there is a list of uh, additional uh, roadmap items that we're focused on for the next 12 to 18 months to bring on board. And working very closely with the, cu with the customers from IBM Cloud. And, and the, the beauty is that the, the customer success management, tech sales in IBM, and cloud sellers, you know, we're connected to all of those three organizations to take it in front of the customers. It's make some good bank with IBM. Yeah. What's the product focus? I think one of the most interesting potential features we're, we're thinking about, or I'm thinking about, is because we sit in the data path, looking for anomalies, whether data is being encrypted all of a sudden, there's different uh, signatures, which means there's probably been an event, and then you can at least stop, try to block, and then recover faster with a greater assurance of when you were infected to get back up and running without paying a ransom or paying cyber insurance, which probably won't cover it anyway and then having to tell your customers you lost the data. So being more predictive, I think, is, is a good, uh, good next AI hashtag, hashtag AI feature. <laughs> right. Last question, Mike, take us out with, if do you have a, a favorite ransomware recovery story that you can share, don't have to name the customer, where primary IO was the primary reason that they were able to return to business as usual? Uh, I think the main one was a customer was hit they had no idea when it happened, and they were trying to restore from backup tapes. And you know that's a slow process in general, and then if you keep going and going and going, so like they're, they're a good reference customer to like, we need your solution because we can't go through this again. And we don't, we're not sure we won't have to go through it again. So 
now how do we have proper protection? So they had no idea where that mark was. No, no. So they, had, they were blind. Yeah, yeah. So they spent, I, I don't even, it was weeks, maybe months of trying to get back. Damn. Just wow. to add to that, uh, uh, he asked about, you know, verticals. Honestly, so every, almost every vertical is affected by this. And that the customer that Mike is, uh, was referring to, it was a large um, retail chain. So anywhere from retail to uh, uh, financials to uh, medical billing systems, these are the two, three customers that we've worked very closely with that, uh, you know, complete different verticals. Right. But, education uh, yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Education yeah. space, education. exactly. Yeah. Taxation, by the way, the tax company here in the U.S. that, you know, benefit from it. So yeah. uh, all verticals, all walk of Excellent. Guys, yeah. so primaryio.com is the website. Correct. Yeah. Go there, check it out, check out this technology, how it can help you really implement true disaster recovery as a service. Guys, Lorenzo, Mike, great to have you on the program. Thank you so much for joining us, spending yeah. some time sharing what with what Primary IO is really enabling organizations to achieve. Yeah. We appreciate it. And Thank you. Appreciate congrats it. Thank on the you announcement. So much. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thanks. For our guests and for John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from VMware Explore Day 2. Stick around. Our coverage continues next.